Hey guys, are you here? And today I have a very important video for you guys talking about spell Q window. Whether you PvP, PvE, or kind of whatever class you play, this is really important to get your globals off as soon as they come up. So spell Q window essentially means when your abilities are being queued up, how far in advance is your next global being queued up. If you set it to zero, there's no spell queue window at all, and your abilities are going off as you press them, which leaves little micro gaps in each global cooldown. If you have your spell queue window set to say 400, there's a, you know, 400 milliseconds that it queues up your next ability. So let's take a look in game here. In 7.2, they made the default spell queue window to 400, okay? Um, this add-on is called advanced interface options. I'll link it down below, but you can change all of this with scripts as well. So the default was set to 400. Um, and, and for a lot of people in 7.2, a lot of people set it to zero by default because it felt laggy on 400, right? So I'm going to reload my UI and I'm going to show you guys why this is so important. Um, most of the PVPers that I know had it set to 400. A lot of my friends, I mean, set it to zero or 400. Um, and a lot of my friends um, had it set to zero. Um, um, and the reason it's so important is because if you have it set to zero, you're missing globals between each ability. And if you're a PvE, this is very important as well. There's going to be a gap between each one of your abilities. No matter how fast you're spamming your keys, there's still going to be a gap. But with a spell queue window of uh, 1, 2, 3, 400, your abilities are going to go uh, much smoother. So I figured this out on my rogue the other day when I was t um, talking about my rogue rotation in my uh, stream chat. And I'll do a rogue rotation video, but this isn't it. But basically, if I do a rogue rotation with cheap shot, I was basically saying you could only get two globals off before you had to read cheap. And my chat was saying, no, you could get three globals off before your next cheap. So I was gonna, I, I was proving it to them with my uh, spell queue window at zero, and I do cheap shot, and then I do one global, two globals, three globals, and I read cheap, and see there was a slight gap. I don't know if you guys noticed, but between the first cheap shot and the second cheap shot, if I wanted to use three globals, there's a slight gap, right? There, the, there's a gap in the stuns, which is bad. You don't want a gap in the stuns because that means someone could vanish, someone could uh, skin, someone could use a cooldown wall. You don't want gaps in your stuns as a rogue. You want to have a stun into another stun into another stun with no gaps, right? And that's a problem, right, if there's a gap. So I was, I was basically saying if you do three globals in your cheap shot, there's going to be a gap, so don't want to do that only do two. And then someone in my stream was like, no, I could do three, and they were, were testing it. And after like an hour or two, I think we, yeah, an hour or two of testing, we finally figured out that the spell queue window default value of 400 is very important. Um, you can set it to, I was setting mine to uh, 100 plus your current latency. So my latency right now is 24. So I would set this to like 124. Um, that was set, that's the advice from someone in my chat. Most people have this at the default value of 400. If you want to see what your lag tolerance, aka spell queue windows at, I'll link a script on the screen right now to show you how to check it. Um, but basically, you don't want this at zero. And a lot of people have this set to zero. So don't have your spell queue window set to zero or else you won't be able to do a smooth rotation. So here, with the value at 124, I'm going to reload my UI quickly. Uh, I think you have to reload your UI when you put the value in. I'm going to go stealth. I'm going to cheap shot. Okay, one, two, three. Boom. Re-cheap shotted. No gap three globals. Did you guys see that? You can go back in the VOD um, or the video if you didn't see that. But with the zero lag tolerance, guys, with zero lag tolerance, there was a gap, okay? With the spell queue window at zero, there was a clear gap between my first and my second stun. I did the exact same rotation, but this time I put my spell queue window to 124, 100 plus my latency, and I, there was no gap. Same exact rotation, but no gap in your stuns. You know what that means? The spell queue window is maximizing the effectiveness at the rate of which your spells are being fired, right? As soon as the global comes up, if there's already a spell in the queue, it's being fired instantly, right? There's no, okay, the, the global's over, now what's your next ability? Okay, you hit uh, Shadow Strike. Global's over, now what's your next ability? It's already queuing it up, so as soon as that global ends, it's using another global over and over. So I wanted to make this video as a public service announcement for everyone watching. Don't put your spell queue window to zero. Um, I Most people have it fine on 400. When I put it on 400 personally, I feel a little bit laggy. So I, I don't, I wouldn't, 
I don't know. You, you can do it anywhere between like 1 to 400. I wouldn't recommend, I don't even know if you can go higher, but yeah, 1 to 400 is probably a good bet. But basically, wanted to make the video to, to tell you guys don't have it on zero if you want your openers to be smooth. But I was ecstatic when I found this out yesterday because essentially I'm getting an extra global in every stun, right? Um, this guy might be testing out as well, I'm not sure. But let's go over here to this trading dummy. Um, essentially, I'm being able to cheap shot, night blade, dance, shadow strike, shadow strike, and then re cheap shot with no gap. I might have hit my abilities a little slow there, um, but with the custom lag tolerance into 124 for me works out very nicely so i can get my stuns off with that extra global with no gap and just throughout the game i'm going to be using my globals more effectively so everyone watching pvp or pve or rogue mage whatever you're playing make sure to set that custom lag tolerance that spell q window not to zero and essentially guys the reason why everyone had it set to zero is because when seven patch 7.2 came out um when patch 7.2 came out, they increased the default to something, I think they increased it to 400, and it felt really laggy for everyone, so everyone's like, oh, set this to zero, set this to zero. So everyone set it to zero, everyone that I know, at least in the PvP community, set it to zero, which turns out is really bad. So here's a video, hope it helps you guys. Also, 7.3 is announced to come out to, um, on the 29th. That was just announced earlier today, so let's quickly look at the patch notes. Okay guys, here are the 7.3 patch notes. It is confirmed to come out on the 29th of this month, so very excited, specifically for the new spell animations. If you guys haven't checked it out, I made a video on the spell animations. The new animations are amazing. But anyway, I'm just I'm quickly going to scroll through here. Um, I'm going to have this also linked down below the, for the patch notes if you guys want to check it out. And I want to look at the PvP changes or any class changes. So we have class changes for uh, Frost, Death Knights. I've been hearing a lot of damage that Frost DKs are going to be OP. Um, damage increased by 14%. Uh, Sintra Ghost increased by 10%. A lot of buffs here. Obliteration uh, duration increased. Obliteration now causes Howling Blast. Hunger and Rune Weapon duration reduced to 12 seconds was 15. And it additionally grants 20%. Hey, so a bunch of of changes, a bunch of buffs. Um, I'm not going to go too much into Frosty Ks, but I think Frosty Ks are going to be pretty nutty, which might mean Windwalker, Frosty K, like Monk or Pally or Druid might be a really good composition once again, or our Shaman, really. Um, and then here we're looking at Druid uh, talent changes. Mass Entanglement is now 15 yard AoE around the target, which is interesting. Prowl cooldown reduces 6 seconds, was 10, that's fine. Um, rebirth, you can't use Rebirth Arena. Anyways, now cast in all forms. Coolio. Feral Druid um, changes all around the board. This isn't a video about the change, uh, like all the intricacies of the changes, but I'll quickly go over them. Um, all damage increased by 33% on Feral Druids. That seems like a lot, but it's probably going to be modified here from the buffs and nerfs. Um, Blood Talon damage bonus reduced to 20 was 50, right? So so all damage increased, but then that was reduced by 30. Um, Elune's Guidance cooldown reduced to 30 seconds was 45. Fix the bug with Incarn, where Ferocious Bite gives you extra energy. Um, cool. Incarnation now only uh, allows the use of Probe while in combat once throughout its duration. Wow, that's a big change. Normally, you can get a couple of restells, which is actually really annoying to deal with, so I'm actually happy about that. Um, I'm going to keep scrolling through here. I want to see if there's any mage changes. It's actually the first time I've looked at these changes. Hunter, Porcupine Family has been renamed to Rodent. Wow, big Hunter changes there. What a surprise. Um, Monk, Windwalker, Rushing Jade Wind, um, damage increased by 22. So yeah, Windwalker, Frost DK might be really, really good now. Touch of Damage is now increased by Versatility. Touch of Karma's Damage is now increased by Versatility. So some buffs to Windwalkers as well. Paladins, Rhett and Prot changes. Um, damage increased by Rhett, 6%. Um, Wrath of Ashbringer trait bonus reduced uh, to 2 seconds was 2.5. Uh, damage increased by Execution Sentence. Uh, mastery Effect and Judgment increased by 46. Okay, so some ret buffs as well. I guess we we're seeing uh, rets underperform just a little bit, so I don't mind that uh, quite at all, really. I like when ret hunter is in the meta, so I think it's fun to play against. Unbreakable Will is no longer triggered when you're under the effect of Sleep Canister. Interesting. All right, uh, prop pallies. Hopefully some nerfs. I don't know. Don't like prop pallies that much in PvP, at least. Um, Ellie Shaman changes. Ellie's have been not viable for quite some time now. Let's see what they did. Earthquake damage increased by 19%. Static Overload redesigned. Um, all damage abilities increased by 6. Earth Shock increased. Frost Shock increased. Ellie Blast increased. Ellie Blast now provides 2,000 stat. 
um, was 2400, so a slight nerf to the Ellie Blast then. Um, Ellie Overload, that's 85%, was 75. Proc rate reduced a little bit, so a little changes there on Overload. And uh, Totem Mastery um, reduced to 5%, was 10%. So uh, buffs overall, I believe, for Ellie Shaman. So interesting if we're going to see Ellie's in the meta. Hellstone now heals 25% of the user's health at all levels. Okay, interesting. Fury Warrior, uh, slight changes here. Execute damage increased. Juggernaut damage bonus um, changes as well. And nothing for mages, I guess. I was kind of scrolling, hoping to see something for mages. Buff to Frost. No, I'm kidding. But, you know, a little, a little change here or there would be nice. But let's see. Uh, keep scrolling down. Player versus player. Here we go. Um, anything good? Let's take a look. Pets in PvP are now immune to taunt effects for 20 seconds after being taunted. Okay, I think it's a good change. Um, Resto Shaman, the totem summoned by Grounding Totem, will no longer take damage from spells that are redirected to it. Hmm, interesting. So I wonder if that means you will have to target the Grounding Totem to kill the Grounding Totem. Huh, interesting. That's very weird. Um, Fears, Gladiators, Cloak rating requirement increased. Uh, interesting. Additional artifact power tokens are awarded to players that win arena matches. Do you guys hear the thunder? It's thundering outside. I love the thunder. Win arena matches based on the player's rating starting at 1800. Um, let's see. Addition, additional artifact power tokens are awarded to players that win arena matches based on the player's rating starting at 1800. Okay, cool. More AP. I'll take it. Um, let's go for it. Enchanter's Illusion Glorious Tyranny is now available to purchase for characters who earned... Okay, yeah. That's pretty standard for the start of a new season. And Enchanter's Illusion Primal Victory is now available to purchase... Um, Cool. Same same exact thing. So there's the changes all around. Quick uh, breakdown of 7.3 and a quick note on that spell queue window. I will have both of these things all linked down below in the uh, in the bio. Um, check it out. Which also means, guys, that the season should be ending on the 29th, which is less than a week. So good luck on your rating pushes. I'm gonna personally go for Gladiator on my rogue. That's my goal this season. Hopefully, I can get it. If not, it's my first season in threes on a rogue. So. If not, we'll go for our next season. But here it is, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it didn't go too long today. But yeah, thumbs the video up if you liked it, guys. Thumbs it down if you didn't. Talk to me in the comments below about all the spell queue window crap. What did you have it set to? Um, what did you, what are you going to change it to? And uh, what are you going to be pushing for your end of season pushes? Guys, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.